Are you trying to figure out the right way to work with Excel and Power BI? Well, today we are going to show you three ways to work with Excel and Power BI. That's the right way to do it and to not screw up and make your life a nightmare in the future. All right. Welcome to Chris BI. My name is Chris Wagner. Let's head over to it. Okay. So we, we've all been in the situation. We get this we get this file that's emailed to us on a regular basis, right? Here's my Dunder Mifflin sales report. It comes in, I get all my information about who's been selling what, when, and where, right? And I want to create a report off of it, okay? Now, this is something I, I, I know I get on a regular basis, but I just don't know much about it. So how am I going to, as someone who's new to working in uh, Power BI, how could I start to, to use this data? Well, don't worry, this is super simple to do it in a, quick down and dirty way to get this information, right? So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna select the top cell inside my table, right? So you can see I've I selected the top cell. Then I'm gonna do uh, control shift, uh, right arrow to go all the way over to the side and then control shift arrow all the way down to the bottom. This is gonna grab my entire table. I've got it all selected. I'm gonna hit control C to copy this information. Now I'm gonna head over to Power BI, all right? Once I've logged into app.powerbi.com, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this create button, all right? It's gonna give me the option to create a new Power BI report and I got two options. I can paste or manually enter the data in or I could pick a published data set. In this case, I'm just gonna paste that data in, all right? So I'm gonna click on paste the data in. I'm gonna hit control V. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna select the cell. I'm gonna hit control V. All my information is gonna paste in. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure to use the first row as headers, right? So now my company name, contact name, country, all this stuff is added in. And then I'm gonna click on auto create report. System's gonna process for a little bit. It's gonna load that information into my system and it's gonna auto generate a report for me to start to use, okay? now. That was it, you saw it in real time. This is the report that I have available to me. I can go in and I can now start to understand more about the data that's available to me, right? Like I could see easily, you know, uh, printer paper is the number one thing that's driving our sales. Next thing is printers, but that's way down the list, okay? I could see all sorts of different things about who's who's bringing in the most revenue, right? I could see uh, Schrute is number one, uh, uh, I don't even know who Gross is, but uh, Packer, um, Generone, Halpert is, is down there as well, right? So there's a whole bunch of, you know, I could I could see all sorts of insights right, right away for, with, with the information that was available inside my Excel spreadsheet, right? So if I was just sent this randomly, I now have more information about my report. I can use this. I can even go in and I can actually edit this, right? So yeah, I want to edit this and I want to change this up. I, I want to, you know... I don't know, add in some more information about uh, a drill in capability. So we've got the description. Maybe I wanna have in, I don't know, something weird. Like I wanna do ship two cities more important to me, right? So I wanna see where, where I'm shipping and from within there, what's being shipped in, inside of this stuff, right? I wanna create that drill pattern. Completely editable, something I could just get in, start to use, all right? Number two. All right, so this is my table, right? So this is the information that I use. This is my Excel spreadsheet that I, I'm getting in. And I wanna I wanna automate a report off this information and I do it, wanna do it on a regular basis, right? Like this thing comes in, I've, uh, you know, I get an email with this. I've set up a Power Automate so that when the email comes in, I'm gonna save this out into a SharePoint site or out into Teams, right? So if I go into Teams, I highly recommend creating a data file folder, right? So you can see that out inside my Teams folder, I've got a folder right for data, right? So I'm gonna select that inside of this file. You can see I've got my Dunder Mifflin sales file, okay? So I'm gonna automate dropping the file out to this web location. By having it available out on the web, I'm able to automatically sync so that power, my Power BI report is going to refresh from this source and not from something stored on my desktop, right? So what I really want to avoid is I want to avoid saying, 
uh, here's a file on my C drive or that I'm referencing from my C drive, which is my local hard drive, because everyone has a C drive. The web doesn't know what C drive you're talking about. You need a URL that can, can take you to that file, okay? Let me show you how to do that, right? So I've opened up this file from that location, okay? So instead of browsing to my file and saying, okay, hey, here's this location. I do not, I do not want to use this C drive, okay? This is what would be bad. This will make it so that I can't auto re refresh my Power BI report, okay? So instead of that, from this file, I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to info, right? I'm going to go to info. And in here, I'm going to click on that copy path. Copy path is going to get me the URL for wh what that OneDrive is, where that folder is. So here, let me show you. I click on copy path. I fire up OneNote. I paste it in. Actually, that's the wrong one. That's a good one, too. But we're going to see that it's, we could see by honing in on it, that it's got the SharePoint.com sites. It's got my uh, team area that it's in. It's in my shared documents, my general folder and it's in my data folder, okay? And then here is the folder the name. Now, the big key with this is we need to, when we use this, we need to remove this question mark web equals one, okay? That's that's gonna be the, the death of what you have. You don't wanna use that. You If you leave that on, you're gonna have all sorts of errors. It's not gonna work. So you have to know that you have to eliminate and remove that little bit of this string, okay? So I'm gonna grab everything except for that question mark. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna fire up Power BI. So now that I've got Power BI up, uh, in order to connect to this, I am, here's the biggest danger I don't want you to do, right? So I want you to, to make sure that you do not click on the Excel workbook. Excel workbook is bad, okay? Really wish they, that they'd remove that button from your, like the default screen, it should not be there. Uh, that's gonna insist that you go from a local path. Local paths are bad. I mean, you can kind of do it for like an ad hoc thing, but frankly, just do it from a URL and it's gonna be so much simpler, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead, click on get data, and I'm gonna choose web, okay? Uh, web, so you can kind of see it here. All right, web is the guy I'm gonna pick, All right? I'm gonna click on web it's gonna pop up, it's gonna pop up this from the web box and I'm gonna paste in my URL here. And the big thing I'm gonna make sure is at the end of it, at the end of it, I am I have the .xlsx file name available for me. So I'm gonna go ahead, once it's in place, I'm gonna click on okay. It's gonna ask me, how do you want to authenticate? Now here is the big deal. You're never connecting to SharePoint through Anonymous and SharePoint Online, you're not connecting with Windows. Windows is a local, like on-premise form of, of connecting. You need to be doing the organizational account, okay? So you're gonna need to do the organizational account and you have to make sure that you sign in in order to make this work, okay? Go ahead, click on sign in. It's gonna ask you to connect. You sign in with your credentials. Click connect. It's gonna go and ask you what you wanna to connect to. Now, I know that that happens to be the, the sales table inside my data set. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on sales and click on load. Once that gets done loading, I'm gonna have all of the same information that was available in my uh, previous report that was auto-generated is now gonna be available uh, in Excel. So I've got my, uh, I can even compare I've got my company names, right? You can actually kind of see them line up right next to each other. All right, I've got my company names. I've got my contract names, country, description, all this stuff lines right up. I, I, I'm i ready to go. I can create this exact same report that's over here in Power BI. I can now go ahead and create in Power BI Desktop. I can add in measures. I can add in my own custom themes. I can do all of that stuff right away. So I'm good to go. Then once I get done with this report, I can publish this out into the service and I can schedule it to refresh, you know, every morning at 7 a.m. So when that file shows up, uh, it uh, it's gonna get picked up at the next morning at 7 a.m. Better yet, 
if I if I do have Power Automate saving that file to someplace, I can actually have that Power Automate copy the file over and then schedule this report to refresh from the Power BI service. Huh? Big brain thinking. All right, so those are the two two of the best ways to work with Power BI uh, and Excel. Now let's go to the big major one, okay? Now, let's say you're on the other side of the field, right? So instead of, uh, instead of you getting this file, someone's saying, hey, Chris, can you please send me this file on a regular basis? I wanna get this export out of Excel. Currently, this is something that you manually load, you, you bring out there. How can, can you send this over to me? Oh, gone are the days where you have to like manually create this or, or, or do something else in order to generate this. Now you can create this exact same file. Uh, in fact, you can even do one better by using the embedded Power BI data sets so that that file is just always out and available and published and, and live. And you don't have to worry about what's, you know, what's, what, you know, refreshing that, that content. Okay. So you can do that by creating the exact same report. You can actually see I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth between these pages while there's small little formatting things I could get a little more. Uh, you know, I could dial in my pixel perfect nature of it. This right here is coming from a Power BI data set, okay? So what you're seeing here is actually a Power BI data set uh, that is generating this information and I'll show it to you. So if I, I click on any one of these table items, we actually see the sources of this information is all right over here. This is a data set that I've published out onto the Power BI service. And I've now gone in and I've built out that exact same report using the data that's out in the service versus having one that I'm just manually copying and pasting. The great news is this now refreshes all the time and I don't have to worry about like running exports and doing all that stuff. It's out, it's available, we're, we're, we're good to go. And it's secure, so you don't have to worry about like uh, you know, the distribution of things and people seeing things they shouldn't have to see, right? Because it's going to authenticate and get that information from the Power BI service. All right. So um, uh, these are the three ways of getting, it, of working with Excel and Power BI properly. Two ways to get, to take Excel data and take it into Power BI and one powerful way to get data out of Power BI and into Excel. All right, I hope you found this useful. If you did, leave a like and a comment down below. Love to hear your feedback. Love to hear what you're thinking about these things. Uh, uh, please share this with people in your company so that they know that these are the best ways to get information out of Power BI. I love these features. I love these capabilities. I think you will too. I think you'll find your, your organization benefits from, from following these three methods of working with Excel and Power BI. You guys have a great day. Stay out of trouble. Peace.